Hey y'all, so today's going to be a rant video, but um, kind of a rant that's long overdue, about seven months in the making, and it's going to be on a Paso Saddlery. Um, I did previous videos talking about them, showing off their craftsmanship or lack of craftsmanship. Today I want to talk about what it took to get a holster returned to them for a refund and how much of a pain it was and why for some reason it decided or they decided it needed to take seven months. So for those that know, I ordered the shoulder rig from them. That was the last holster I ordered from a passive salary and it was screwed up. It was so screwed up that they screwed it up twice and then that was the end of it. But now I'm going to talk to you about all the behind the scenes things that went on and what basically led up to me basically telling them I want nothing to do with the company. I want my money back. So this will ramble a little bit. I apologize. We're covering seven months. So on 915, I ordered their shoulder holster, the model 200 shoulder rig for my 329 PD. It took till 112 for it to show up. Now I give them a little bit of leeway because COVID has slowed people down. It happens, you know, everyone seems to use COVID as an excuse. Uh, I could argue back and forth on that, given that I worked every single day of the pandemic, but I won't beat them on too much because fine, even though they're Texas and Texas fills it in open, fine. So, uh, received the holster on 112. Um, holster was screwed up. I showed, you know, the thumb brake. It was so short, you couldn't even close it with the gun in it. I tried breaking it in. I tried all these different things. It did not work. So I immediately contacted El Paso Saddlery uh, on their Facebook page. They have a Facebook page that's managed by someone. I messaged them, sent them a brief video showing the issue. Was told to email them, right? So I emailed them the same day. Um, did not hear anything back until the 15th, right? So I emailed them on the 12th and did not hear back from them until the 15th, right? I had actually had to contact them a couple times regarding the issue. Finally got... Um, Robert, you're going to hear a lot about Robert. Robert is, um, well, he's an interesting individual. We'll say that. So basically, Robert texted me because that, you know, this was how most of the conversation with Robert went. He called and texted. So he contacted me. I told him about the issue. They said he was going to remake it. I accepted. He said I would receive it within a week. Fine. So 125, right? So 10, like, um, 10 days after I was told by Robert I'd get a replacement. Still no holster, contacted them again. Robert told me I'd have the 26th. It's all good. Received the holster, or it would go out the 26th. I'd have it the 28th. Received the holster on the 28th, right? So the 28th, I received the second holster. It was just merely the holster part of the shoulder rig. So um, that was what was really the big problem. That's the part that I received. That was also screwed up. So basically the first time I contacted him, I talked to him on the phone or he contacted me, I should say. Um, <clears throat> basically what happened was he first started saying that they per perhaps made it improperly with the wrong size gun, which I kind of agreed with. But then he kind of went back on that and said that, oh, well, it must be because my front sight is larger. The gun is a 329 PD, in case I haven't mentioned that. And it's a Smith & Wesson end frame. He told me first the front sight is too big. He then told me it has an elongated hammer. He started making all these excuses of why the holster didn't work, basically claiming it was my gun's fault. Spoiler alert, the front sight on my gun is not extra big, and my hammer is not extra large. It's just a normal Smith & Wesson end frame. An end frame is an end frame is an end frame. Anybody that knows Smith revolvers knows that that's the case. You would think a holster company that's been in business since 1889 would know that. They did not. Um, so basically... Um, he sent me the replacement, and the replacement did not work either. The replacement was entirely too big. The gun flopped around it. It, it was useless. At this point, I'm done. I say to them, you know, it's, it's, I've been waiting for this holster since mid-September. I'm, I'm done with you guys. You know, you've made me three different holsters. Three different holsters have had to be redone or have had issues to a certain extent. It's obvious your, Q, your QC, your quality control is not up to my standards. So I just want my money back, right? So that was on the 28th. I told them I want my money back. Didn't hear anything. The next day, the 29th, I recontacted him. Again, I waited 24 hours. This is via text. So, I mean, I know we got it. So 24 hours later, I retext him back. I'm like, hey, man, you know, uh, send me a label. I'll return this. I'm done with you guys. Uh, he finally tells me to send the holsters back for a refund. Now, at this point, I've twice now mentioned sending me a label. 
I'm uh, naturally not going to pay to ship back your, your inferior products because I'm just not. I'm not paying to ship them back. You could send me a label since it's you guys who screw up. Um, so I waited till 2-1, still no label. Again, contacted Robert. Hey, man, waiting to send these holsters back, still no label. I had called them also and basically got told that, well, they don't send back, the, uh, they don't send uh, return labels, blah, 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 blah. We went back and forth a little bit. I said, hey, guys, it, you know, I'm returning them because of you guys' a screw up. It's kind of on you. So finally, after one week, two, three, I finally received a label, right? Send a label. So on two, four, right, it took them a week to send me the label. I sent the holsters back the next day. Two, four, all holsters shipped back. Two, eight, holsters received. Expecting a refund in a day or so. Not the case. Of course, not the case. That's why I'm making this video. So on 2.15, right, I contacted Robert again. Still no money, right? I'm like, hey, man, just touching base. You've had the holster since the 8th. Just wondering about my refund. Because, and I should mention, I sent back two holsters. I sent back, because I had, I have three holsters made by them. Two of them were actually made fairly recently. And I'm like, you know what? They're both messed up. I want money back on both of them because I'm, I'm tired of wearing your product. I, I, I can't trust it because it's poor quality and I just don't, I just don't want to wear your product because I like having pride in what I wear holster wise. I don't have pride wearing these products because one, the shoulder rig doesn't work at all. And the 1911 holster that I had made by them, which was their crosshair, it was just an open top belt holster. It was in poor quality or it was poor quality. And again, watch the previous video and you'll see that. So, um, basically I mentioned to him like, Hey man, still no money, no anything. Um, finally on two sixteen, right? So they had the holsters on two eight. Finally on two sixteen, I'm contacted by El Paso salary. I received the money for one holster. I received the money back for the shoulder rig, right? Um, they had technical difficulties and were able to, unable to refund me on the crosshair holster, the belt holster, right? I was told, you know, get fixed, whatever, you know, we went back and forth. Late February, right? So middle of February, there's the issue. Late February, we finally come to the resolution. They're going to just send me a check by mail. It'll be done. Done, right? They're sending me a check. It's over. No. So late February, um, they tell me that. 226, the first check is supposed to be mailed. I'm told the check is in the mail. Late March, here's where we take a pretty good jump. Late March, no check, right? So I gave it a good solid month because the post office is a little screwy right now. Fine. Late March, no check, and I'm told a new one would be sent. So I'm told in late March, because I contacted them by phone, and I talked to uh, one of the receptionists, someone there, and he told me that they apologize, that this is unacceptable, and that they are sending me a new check. They're doing it today, and if I don't have it within a week, a week time, that basically they will personally, someone from El Paso will sell me the money from them, like someone will sell it to me, and then they will handle it themselves, I will be made whole. That was not the case, so I waited again, as some of you might know, I was moving. I was relocating, and the, basically the, the cutoff date was 4-10. So I waited till 4-8, right? I gave this check as many days as I possibly could. And I said, okay, it's the 8th. I'm leaving basically the next day or so. I need to know where this check is because I was told it's not here. I want my money. I want this to be done. I called again. I got someone else on the phone. I said, hey, guys. No check, no anything. The first person on the phone tells me, oh, well, they're going to cancel the, that one and resend it. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but um, first of all, you, I don't currently have an address to send it to. You know, I was in the process of moving, so you can't send it to the address on file because I'm leaving here in the next day. And secondly, I'm tired of waiting for these mystery checks. Um, I'm tired of waiting for these checks. They never show up. I don't know why they're not showing up. I don't know what you guys are doing. But I'm not getting them. I want my money. I'm tired of doing this. So basically the person on the phone, and I was nice to him because he's, you know, just someone who answers the phone. It's not his fault. And he sounded like he was fairly new. I think he actually mentioned that. Um, basically said, well, what do I, what can I do? And I said, give me Robert because he was the guy that was supposed to be in charge and that's been handling this. I get told Robert doesn't want to come on the phone. And I'm like, I mean, 
I'm, I work customer service all day long. It's not that I enjoy working with customers, but that's kind of how the gig works. So I'm told that Robert doesn't want to come to the phone, that he's going, that he has completely jumped the gun and he's on his way to recut the check and mail it out. At which point I again try and explain to them, I'm not going to be to the address they're sent. I'm not going to be at the address they sent the check to. So we go back and forth, and this is about a, this is about a half hour, I think, or longer phone conversation. It's drug on quite long. Um, so basically, I just keep saying, well, give me Robert, because if Robert is in charge, you know, and again, I was trying to be polite to the person that was on the phone, because it wasn't his fault. He just works there. I keep saying, give me Robert. And of course, Robert, you know, basically the guy, <laughs> I felt bad for the guy, because he finally just kind of admitted that, um, you know, Robert was dodging the phone and didn't want to talk to me. I wonder why, maybe because I've been dealing, he's been dealing with me for the last uh, six, seven months. Um, finally, I get Robert on the phone, and Robert has quite an attitude. So Robert basically starts ranting about how they've sent the check and they've tried to make it right, blah, 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 blah. And I say to him, well, you know, I'm not getting them. I don't know what's going on. This has been a long overdue thing that should have been handled months ago. Um, he's like, well, I need an address. And I'm like, well, I was told that I'd have the money transferred to me. We don't do that. We're a company. We don't send, we don't direct send money or send it, you know, via, via like sell or anything like that. And I'm like, I mean, I know several companies that will send money directly. You know, you could send it through your personal thing and have the company reimburse you. At this point, it should be about making the customer whole after seven months rather than continue to drag this on. So that rather upsets Robert, at which point Robert basically starts screaming into the phone, telling me that if I don't, you know, if I don't cooperate, I don't uh, basically play along with his silly little game that I'm going to hear dial tone. Now, I really wish I had that phone conversation recorded because you would all probably really enjoy hearing it. I would, I know I would certainly enjoy re-listening to uh, Robert basically scream at a paying customer, or at least what used to be a paying customer, but unfortunately I do not. Um, but yeah, hearing hearing Robert uh, scream into the phone how I'm going to hear dial tone because basically I'm refusing to p continue to let them keep sending me checks and how they've they've made every effort to refund me, except actually refunding me, it got quite interesting. So when I basically said to them how, you know, they need to find a way to make this right, he hung up on me. I guess I did get dial tone. Um, oh, well. So basically, um, that was seven months in, and I basically, we what ended up happening was I chose, I had a address of a friend that I could send the check to, so it went there. And after seven months of waiting for a holster and waiting and waiting and then waiting for replacements and going back and forth, after seven months, El Paso Salary finally refunded me. That is unacceptable. Um, that is completely and totally unacceptable. Screaming at customers, paying customers, people that, uh, you know, let's face it, not everybody my age likes leather holsters. So, um, you know, I'm not to toot my own horn, but I'm kind of the demographic that they need to, they need to get right now because, you know, leather holster work, most people want my age want Kydex. So to be sitting there and screaming at a customer because after seven months, all they would like is their money back. And you'd had, you know, again, this is, this is, this is beginning of April. They had had the holsters back since the beginning of February, right? So it's not like this was after one week of them having the holsters, I'm, you know, basically demanding my money back. This was since the beginning of February, they'd had their, their items back. Um, so that's, that is my rant on El Paso. That is why I don't recommend purchasing from the company. I don't recommend dealing with the company. And as far as I'm concerned, I will never purchase from them again. Um, I, I'd had several good conversations with a few of the people working there that basically had talked about them trying to bring the company back and make the company better, which, you know, I, I can respect that. Um, you know, I can understand companies go through ups and downs with quality control and ups and downs with ownership, but um, that is unacceptable. That is completely unacceptable. Um, and, and something I said to Robert, I actually sent Robert a picture of my holster bin, this big, huge bin that I keep under my bed that's packed solid with holsters from all sorts of different companies. And I said to them, I'm like, I have never had so many issues with a holster company than you guys. I have, you know, countless Galco, countless DeSantis, countless 1791, like just holsters from everybody, Kraft, 
you know, all these other companies that are basically much closer to mass production companies, basically are mass producing holsters. Um, you can buy them off Amazon and they're there in a day. And you guys who I waited four months for a holster expect, you know, I paid a little bit more and I waited longer expecting quality and then to not only get basically an unusable holster, right? Multiple unusable holsters. And to then, and then when I finally say, okay, I'm done, I'm not going to, you know, I, I, I don't want, I don't want your products anymore. I, I just can't in good faith. You know, I don't want you to have my money anymore to then have to fight that hard to get my money back when they have a warranty. As far as I know, they have like a lifetime warranty, like everything's covered. It's not even like they don't have a warranty. Um, it, it's just unacceptable. So that's my rant. I know it's going like 15 minutes. It's a bit rambly, but like that's me covering seven months of trying to get a decent pro a decent made holster from a company that on the front of their catalog say quality leather work or something along those lines since 1889. So that is why I will not be giving up house of salary my money anymore. And that's why I can't recommend any of you do that. Um, if you have any questions or comments or fellow, uh, you know, other experiences with the company, feel free to put them down below and have a good day.